four high schools, seven middle schools, one college and a university, and much more. Now introducing your most comprehensive weekly local sports show in Madison County, the Richmond Register Sports Show. The Richmond Register Sports Show is brought to you by Metronet, super fast internet, simply a better connection. Total Comfort, heating and air conditioning. Let Total Comfort keep you cool or warm this winter. Call for service or for a free replacement quote. Wins Auto Detailing Service. And by KYMedia.net, digital media solutions on your terms. Here's your host for all things local sports, the Richmond Register Sports Editor, Nathan Hutchison. Welcome to this week's edition of the Richmond Register Sports Show. My name is Nathan Hutchinson. I'm the sports editor of the Richmond Register and appreciate you tuning in to our very first show of 2023. Do not have any in-studio guests this week. Uh, with it being the holiday weekend, we kind of figured uh, we didn't want to uh, try to bother anybody to come in here and, uh, and do some stuff with us. So but we do have plenty of interviews and stuff here on the show, so you don't have to sit and look at me for the entire show because... Nobody should have to do that. <laughs> but we do have a lot of stuff to get through, though. Uh, I printed this off. It's like 12 pages of stuff. So lots of good stuff to tell you about and tons of holiday basketball action from across the state, across the region, across the country. Uh, we had teams playing all over the place. But uh, our local uh, Madison County teams here have had good success uh, playing in these uh, uh, tournaments here in December. Of course, uh, the Madison Southern Lady Eagles won the Billy Hicks Classic a couple weeks ago up in Georgetown. Uh, the Madison Southern Eagles uh, won the Lee's Famous Recipe Holiday Classic uh, two weeks ago down in Berea. And, of course, the Berea uh, Community Lady Pirates uh, went 3-0 and at the Central Bank Classic up in Lexington a couple of weeks ago. And this past week, we had another championship because the Madison Central Lady Indians picked up four wins in three days to win the championship of the Berea Holiday Classic. Tuesday, a 44-40 win over Grant County. Wednesday, a 67-35 win over Harlan. And then had to win two games on Thursday, 65-56 in the semifinals over Corbin, and 56-40 in the championship game against Bishop Brossert. Uh, Bailey Hensley in the four games, 76 points, 41 rebounds. In the game against Corbin, 29 points, 16 rebounds. In the championship game, 17 points, including her 1,000th point of her career. In the win over Bishop Brossert in the championship, in addition to the 17 points by Bailey Hensley, it was Natea Strader with 11 points, Eden Carter 9 points, Brittany Campbell and Olivia Metcalf with 6 points and 48.9% shooting for Madison Central as they jumped out to an early lead and cruised to the championship. And afterwards, we got a chance to talk to Coach Scott True, Bailey Hensley, and Atea Strader. All right, we're here at Berea Community School where the Lady Indians of Madison Central have won the Berea Holiday Classic. Uh, Bailey Hensley and Atea Strader, congratulations, ladies. Thank you. Uh, it was uh, four games in a little bit over three days, uh, three great performances. So you guys have to be really pleased with the way you guys have been playing. Yes, it's hard doing these three-day tournaments, especially playing two games in one day. Um, yeah, it has been tough, but, you know, we went home and we rested, and we all count on each other. We depend on each other, so that really helps me know that you got people behind your back. Yeah, but the guy, but the tempo you guys play up and down is so aggressive on defense. I think mean, you do rotate in a lot of people, but like you said, two games in one day, near the end there, were you feeling a little bit? I was feeling a lot. <laughs> I used to it. I was super old, so it's hard. It's like that long gap. We were like, oh god. And, but energy was really important, and everybody, even the bench, provided it, and that helped. Yeah, and I'm guessing uh, you guys went into the Christmas break with a little bit of a sour taste in your mouth after the, the Graves County game, and you guys didn't play very well, but you obviously made up for it out here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Coach agrees over there. We, <laughs> just, uh, we didn't let it hang over us. I mean, like True always says, the sun still comes up tomorrow. So yes. Yeah, and uh, you guys have played defensively so well all year. The offense kind of hit or miss sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But in this tournament, all four games, you guys really played well offensively. And what do you guys attribute that to? Uh, <laughs> what was working for you? What were you guys doing better? Um, we were just really trying to go side to side and have movement on our offense. I mean, like, even when we're not going side to side, you know, we're still going to take what's given to us. If, even if we have to work for it for, like, 15 seconds, we're still going to get it. Yeah. You guys had a game this tournament where 11 different people scored, so uh, you guys had a lot of different op options. You know, we like to get everybody completed, you know, points don't matter. It's like, we love playing with each other, and that's what makes it so fun. Uh, well, I was asked to uh, players this when they get the 1,000, did you know you were at 1,000? I had that 
I did. I knew I was close. <laughs> I didn't know how close I was, but I knew I was pretty close to it. Right. Someone yeah. gave you a big hug after you got it, right? That was me! <laughs> <laughs> they were putting the crown on your head there, so. Yeah. Had to be even better to do that in the championship game, I guess, huh? Yes, it was very fun. Alright. I'll work for the. Uh, from February to what we're doing. Alright. You get a few days off here, so it's gonna be nice, huh? It's really nice. <laughs> it's very nice. Alright, well, enjoy it. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we're here at Berea Community High School where Madison Central has won the Berea Holiday Classic. Uh, Coach Scott True, uh, four wins in uh, a little bit over three days. It's been a hectic couple of days, but uh, great performance for your team. Yeah, and I don't know they're tired because I'm exhausted. <laughs> so uh, it was, you know, it was, it was a good tournament for us. Uh, we got, you know, we really got some really good play off our bench as well, which you have to have mm -hmm. um, in in these tournaments, especially when you got by two in the last day. But mm -hmm. as Natalia mentioned, our bench was engaged. Kids that, that maybe don't get to play as much really gave us some energy sitting over there, really helped us out. Um, really pleased with the way we played, how hard we played this week. And I, I knew it'd be tough coming back after beating a very good Corbin team earlier today to come back and play against a very good defensive roster team. And I thought we did we did enough to uh, to to win it tonight. Yeah, both games today you got uh, the early leads, and uh, you said when you got to play that many, it's uh, in that short of span, it's a good thing to get up early. Well, we started well the last two or three games, and, and that's been big for us, and we get a little comfortable with that. It allows us to do what we want to on the defensive end. I think a big thing for us is when we can generate some offense from our defense, and we did that tonight in both games, uh, and we turned some people over and got some breakouts and that sort of thing. And then, you know, it, it, when when Bailey Hensley scores, you know, 44 points in two games, it makes life a little easier for us two or 45, whatever it was. So, and then you know, if not, we get a thousand point, um, and then win the tournament is pretty, is just icing on cake. Yeah, and uh, like I was saying with the girls there, I mean, uh, you've had your offensive struggles at times this year, but man, it was great. You shot 52 percent in the game mm -hmm. uh, earlier, and uh, I guess the, the Corbin game, you guys were up over 50 percent too. Well, and we're learning a little bit. You know, we're starting right now because with Chloe Freeman being out, you know with an injury, we're starting four sophomores in the junior. Mm -hmm. And we're still learning what a good shot is versus a bad shot. And once we started getting better shots, the percentage went up. Um, I knew we would struggle in the fourth quarter tonight, and I was really hoping to get there with a the lead um, because I knew we would be mentally as much fatigued as anything. And, again, we did enough, and, and our kids really fought hard to get this one. Yeah. And, uh, like I said, you, you guys' defense has been so good all year, and you guys uh, love to get out there, press, get turnovers, and uh, – uh, I'm really, uh, it, it's worked all year for you, and that's, uh, I guess a lot of that's uh, obviously the system and uh, just effort. Yeah, and a, and a lot of it's just effort toughness, and, and the girls have bought in the scatter reports, and we, you know, we give them details on teams, and, you know, I, I think our half-court defense is, is becoming a staple for us, and uh, when, when we're, we give that effort and that communication, we make it tough on other teams, you know, they just don't get a lot of good looks, and when you can do that and then get it out and, and, and run a little bit and get some easy with yourself, um, it, it just makes the, the game a little easier to play. Yeah, and they didn't uh, they didn't douse you in water tonight. They did not. <laughs> now, as Bailey said, I had new pullovers. They wouldn't yeah. do that tonight. Honestly, I think they're too tired to do it. <laughs> so they just want to enjoy the home and get to sleep. Are uh, you going to give them a few days off now? Yeah, we, we, will, we will get a couple days off. Uh, we don't play again until the 7th of January. And we, now, we do play at 8 o'clock that morning over practice game. So we'll give them a couple days off, let them get their legs back on there, and then we'll get back after the January. All right, congratulations. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Well, congratulations to Coach and the girls. And uh, I saw both games on Thursday, and uh, that uh, Madison Central offense struggled a little bit early in the season, but it has definitely got things going now. And uh, the way they play defense and cause turnovers, uh, they are playing really, really well. 11-2 and two on the season. Have a little time off, as you heard Coach say in the video there, before they take on Woodford County on Saturday at an event over in Franklin County. Lady Pirates of Berea were also in the Berea Holiday Classic, and they carried a seven-game winning streak into that event, and they pushed that winning streak to eight on Tuesday with a hard-fought 40-38 win uh, over Clay County. Abby Beard, 14 points and seven rebounds. Uh, Sophia Brewer, 10 points, and Lauren Stepp with nine points. Uh, unfortunately for the Lady Pirates, that uh, winning streak was snapped the next day with a 55-39 loss to Bishop Brossert. In that game, Abby Beard had 18 points and Sophie Brewer with 11 points. And then they wrapped up the tournament on Thursday with a 56-36 loss to Jackson County. Uh, Abby Beard had nine points in that game. Eight and three on the season now for the Pirates. And they'll be back in action Friday at Lincoln County. Model 80 Patriots had just one game last week, and it was a non-tournament game. They went on Wednesday up to 
up to Northern Kentucky to take on Williamstown and picked up a 40 to 36 win. Uh, J.D. Balzer 16 points, uh, 13 points and six rebounds. <coughs> Paige Mattingly 12 points. Maya Bondari and uh, Riley Hunt with five points each. And Hunt also had five rebounds as well. 28.6% shooting for model, just five of 28 from the three point uh, uh, line, but still picked up the win to move to four and two on the season. And they're back in action Tuesday at Robertson County. The Madison Southern girls were down in Florida at the Daytona Beach Sunrise Classic. And uh, on Tuesday, it was a 54 35 loss to Cambridge, Georgia. On Wednesday, it was a 58 to 30 win over Prestonsburg. And then on Friday, a 53-39 loss to Perry, Ohio. In uh, the win over Prestonsburg, it was Hadley French, 13 points and four rebounds, Lacey Sandlin with 10 points, and Bella Moberly and Tara Wooten with seven points each. Eight and six on the season, and uh, the Lady Eagles will be back in action at home on uh, Tuesday afternoon against Campbell County. Going to boys basketball, and Madison Southern's boys were also in Florida. They were competing in uh, the mainland Christ uh, Christmas Classic down there in Daytona Beach, and uh, or actually mainland Christmas shootout in Daytona Beach. All these tournaments have different names. It's hard to keep track of them there. And uh, they had a pretty good run down there. But before we tell you a little bit about their trip to Florida, last week when we were off and we had a little of a best of show last week, uh, they picked up the uh, tournament title at the Lee's Famous Recipe Classic there in Berea. The Eagles picked up wins over Dixie Heights and Danville Christian, and then in the championship game defeated a previously unbeaten Pulaski County team. 81 to 71 to take the title and we were there and afterwards we got a chance to talk to, talk to coach uh, bill bevins jay rose case and nobby and zach and brayden hudson Madison Southern High School, where the Eagles have captured the title with the Lee Sims Recipe Classic with a win over Pulaski County. Uh, Case and Navi, uh, Brayden and Zach Hudson, and Jay Rose. Uh, three wins in about uh, 36 hours, guys. Uh, compacted schedule because of the, uh, the weather, but you came out and played three good games. Uh, Jay, just talk about the three wins. Yes, it was rough. I can say that we was playing all, all the all the three games that we were playing was you know no calls, rough, intense. <laughs> uh, we were just trying to you know get into the defense, kick it out for shooters, and we made shots, that's what we wanted. Yeah, especially in the first half, you guys got hot from three. Uh, everybody got hot from three. Was that kind of part of the game plan, or just the way they were playing you, that, that was what was open? Uh, yeah, for sure. Like, we was talking, like, before this tournament, like, we haven't really put it all together yet in the game, and I feel like we did a great job. Like, this tournament, like, it really showed what we do whenever we play as a team. Yeah, you guys had lost three out of four, but you bounced back. I mean, it's a long season. You're going to have ups and downs, and bounce back pretty good here. Yeah, we were definitely ready for this game coming in. They're a top ten team in the state, and you know we think we're just as good as anybody. When we put all of our pieces together, we got so much good chemistry, and when we're built together, we're we're hard to beat. Yeah, I think uh, we say the pass of the day has to go to Brett Ursland though with that oh, uh, sure, length sure, of the court sure. baseball pass. Yeah, yeah, there. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The big man can do some things, can he? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We should have brought him up here, too. Where, where'd he go? He was looking for food, though, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah he was looking <laughs> for food. For sure. <laughs> well, Kaysen, uh, uh, you get the tournament time to get that trophy, and now you head down to Florida. So, kind of, what's, uh, what is the schedule? I mean, when you, when you guys leaving and all that good stuff? We leave, what, Monday morning? Yeah, like 5 30. 5 a.m. We play good competition, though, man. Okay. And was that in Daytona? Is that what that is? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations on the victory. We'll, we'll see Thank you guys you. when you get back. Thanks, sir. Uh, we're back here at Madison Southern High School where the Eagles have won the least famous recipe classic with a win over Pulaski County. Previously undefeated Pulaski County uh, yeah. come in here undefeated and Eagles take the title. Coach Bill Bevan, uh, like I was just saying with the guys there, you know, you guys have been on a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a struggle there. You lost three out of four, but uh, coming back home, your own tournament, you win three yeah. games basically in about 36 hours. So, uh, yeah, it was a good uh, time. Yeah, it was it was good for us for sure. Um, we've been up and down, you know, all year. We've had a pretty good schedule. Um, you know, I, I knew the schedule would help us out. So we've played some good teams, man. Um, yeah. You know, coming back home was nice. Um, you know, it, we put on a pretty good tournament, I think. We, you know, we played some good teams. Um, we had to beat Dixie Heights, which, you know, they gave us a shot. And we didn't play the greatest in that game. You know, but uh, we somehow found a way to get here. Um, you know, we had to beat Danville Christian again in the second round. And um, they got us down there yeah. in a game we felt like – we would like to have back and uh, you know so we got an opportunity to play them again and found a way to win last night they're a really good team um, and then obviously Pulaski tonight you know they're good they were they came in here undefeated 
Um, they're tough, man. Um, they're very well coached. Um, they've got some guys that are super strong, physical kids, um, and they just battle you. I mean, they get after it. So we we knew we knew we had to keep them off the glass, try to get try to you know limit them to one shot. So I felt like we did a pretty good job with that. Um, we rebounded pretty well. I haven't seen the final rebounding numbers yet, but like that was one of our keys is. As we said, this is going to be a man's game. Like, you're going to have to go rebound and keep them off the glass. I think we did a good job. We shared the ball. Guys shot it in. You know, it was fun to coach, for sure. Yeah, and when you guys uh, – you guys got four kids that can go double figures every night, and when they do that, like, like you were just saying with the kids there, you guys are hard to beat. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that, you say we got four, and, and we do. We have four for sure that we're in double figures tonight, but yeah. we've got – six or seven that could go double figures any night so you know I, I love these guys and they've they've worked really hard um and you know they deserve this so i'm uh, i'm really happy for them yeah now uh, heading down to florida so that's kind of that's always fun right yeah hopefully uh hopefully the weather holds out and we get down there okay and uh yeah we're looking forward to it all right congratulations all right thank you very much well the eagles took a lot of momentum from that tournament victory with them down to daytona beach and they did go two and one at the uh, Mainland Christmas Shootout in Daytona. 71-68 win over Ridge Community on Tuesday. On Wednesday, a 58-54 win over Vero Beach, Florida. And then on Thursday, an 89-51 loss to Deerfield Beach, Florida. And the win over Ridge Community. It was uh, Jay Rose, 29 points and five rebounds. And Braden Hudson, 18 points. Zach Hudson, 13 points. And uh, the, both Zach and Braden Hudson had seven rebounds apiece in that game. In the game against, in the win over Vero Beach, uh, Jay Rose 32 points and 10 rebounds, and Zach Hudson with 14 points. And the loss to Deerfield Beach uh, didn't have Brett Ursuline or Zach Hudson in the lineup, but Case and Nobby had 15 points, and Braden Hudson had 10 points. Eight and five on the season for the Eagles. Back in action on Tuesday at East Jessamine. Madison Central's Indians were playing in the White, Greer, and Maggard Holiday Classic at Lexington Catholic last week. And my goodness, what a tough field there was for this event. Uh, some of the top teams in the state, the top ranked team, as you'll hear in just a minute. Uh, this, <laughs> this tournament featured three different players who have more than 3,000 career points, uh, including the, the state's second all-time leading scorer. Just a stacked field. And uh, on Tuesday, Madison Central, right out of the bat, had to face the number one team in the state in Warren Central. And it was the Indians picking up. A uh, 60 to 43 win, 18 to 4 lead after the first quarter. Jalen Davis, 22 points. Hagen Harrison, 16 points, eight rebounds. Robbie Todd, 12 points. Jaden West, 10 points, and six rebounds. Following that big win, they had to come right back the next day and face an undefeated Mason County team, and uh, could not continue that momentum into that second game and, and suffered a 50 to 44 loss to the Royals. In that game, uh, Central shot just 34.6% from the field, 3 of 15 from the three-point line, 5 of 9 from the free, the, the free throw line. Uh, Jalen Davis, 13 points. Jaden West, 11 points. Hagen Harrison, 10 points. And then on Thursday, after facing those two teams, <laughs> Central had to come back and face the number six team in the state in Bowling Green and came up just a little bit short there as well, 58-55. Uh, Central was up seven heading into the fourth quarter, but missed some big free throws down the stretch. Jalen Davis, 17 points, eight rebounds. Jaden West, 15 points. Hagen Harrison with 11 points. Five and six on the season right now for the Indians, and they're back at home. Uh, in action Tuesday at home against Paul Lawrence Dunbar. The Berea Community Boys Basketball team was taking part in the Dan Schwartz Classic at Bath County High School last week over in Owingsville. Won uh, one of the three games they played there on Wednesday. It was a 56-28 loss to Bath County in the tournament opener. On Thursday, it's a 67-33 win over Elliott County, and then they rounded out the event with a 64-38 loss to Bishop Brossert on Friday. The Elliott County game, these two teams had played on December 17th in an event over in Rowan County, and it was the Lions of Elliott County who had beaten uh, Berea, but... Uh, uh, Pirates got a little payback on this night, and it was Cam Puckett, 25 points and 6 rebounds. Finley Blevins, 13 points. Cannon Cummins, 10 points and 10 rebounds. 5-9 and nine on the season now for the Pirates. They're back in action Monday at Casey County. Model Boys uh, basketball team didn't have any games last week. Uh, a little bit of a holiday break for those folks, so 5-6 and six on the season. And they'll be back in action Tuesday up in Lexington against the Christian Educational Consortium. And then uh, looking down the line a little bit, big game uh, here in Richmond on Friday night when Model host Madison Southern. So that'll be a lot of fun. So 
Moving on to college basketball, the Bria College, Bria college uh, uh, Lady Mountaineers uh, took part in the Transylvania tournament this past week. Uh, Thursday picked up a 77-57 win over Center College, and then on Thursday, or uh, Friday, uh, uh, faced the number two ranked Transy in a battle of undefeateds. Uh, Central uh, Bria came in 10-0, uh, uh, Transy came in 12-0, and after one quarter, it was 15-15, but then Transy outscored Berea 25-9 in the second quarter and 20-11 in the third quarter and pulled away for an 82-55 win. Destiny Combs with 23 points and 9 rebounds. Aaliyah Hampton, 13 points, uh, just 37.3% field goal shooting or free throw field goal shooting uh, for Berea as they slip to 10-1 uh, and one on the season. Uh, Bray College back in action Tuesday at home against uh, Collegiate Conference of the South rival Agnes Scott. Uh, the Lady Mountaineers were already 2-0 in conference play and looking to push that to 3-0 on Tuesday at home. Bray College men did not have a game last week. They had uh, a big break over Christmas. They are 7-5 on the season, but they will return to action on Tuesday at Campbellsville University, Harrodsburg. EKU men's basketball opened a sun play on uh, Saturday afternoon at McBrayer Arena versus Queens uh, Queens College, uh, the newest member of the a sun and uh, the Royals have kind of been uh, the surprise story of the a sun so far this year. They were 11 and three coming in. Uh, they just came up from Division Two in their first year in Division One. They had beaten Austin P, Marshall, East Tennessee State, Bowling Green, and a, Bowling Green, and a lot of good teams, but. Uh, on Saturday, it was EKU picking up an 88 to 83 win to go to 8 and 6 on the season, 1 and 0 in the A Sun. Devonte Blanton, 22 points, six rebounds, three assists. Leland Walker, 19 points. Tayshawn Comer, 13 points and six assists. And Isaiah Cozart with seven blocks. And after the game and the post-game press conference and this video provided to us by EKU, Isaiah Cozart talks about EKU's defensive performance against Queens. Yeah, I thought it was great. Um, you know, we definitely had. I think it was definitely the best uh, defensive game in a while that we had, especially, you know, facing such an offensive dominant team like Queens, averaged like 80 points a game. So, you know, it's, it's, it's great to be able to, to, to hold them um, on the offensive or on the defensive end, at least just a little, bit, little by little, you know, either one offensive rebound or two offensive rebounds uh, every couple possessions or a block or a steal or, you know, um, a deflection, anything like that. Um, it's just, you know, what we, go over, what we go over in practice day by day. So I think, you know, it really, really helped us out there. To uh, EKU shot 47% from the field, 10 of 28 from three-point range, 12 of 17 from the free throw line, but they were 11 of 15 from the free throw line in the second half. Uh, some much-needed baskets there. And, of course, we've talked about it on here and also on our nightly show, uh, EKU only hitting about 62% of their free throws on the year. It's, it's really cost them a few games, but uh, once again, they hit them when they needed to to pick up a third straight victory. EKU is right back in action uh, tomorrow uh, on the road. The first ace on road matchup is at Kennesaw State, uh, 6.30 tomorrow. So they're right back in action. EKU's women's basketball team will also open up ace on play tomorrow, Monday, uh, this time at home against Kennesaw State, but they did have one game Last week to tell you about, and it was a 110 to 49 victory over NAIA opponent in Alice Lloyd College. Daniela Rainey, uh, 16 points, 13 rebounds, 10 assists, the first ever triple double in program history. Antoinette Walker with 28 points. Uh, three straight wins for the EKU women, but the road gets a lot tougher from here. Uh, three A Sun games this week, like we said, Monday at, at uh, home against uh, Kennesaw State, then uh, this, uh, Thursday at home against Stetson and then Saturday on the road at Central Arkansas. High school wrestling to tell you about. Madison Central competed in the Woodford County Invitational on Wednesday and Thursday, a two-day event with uh, two different uh, formats on each day. Wednesday was the team duels, and Thursday was the individual event. Uh, on uh, Wednesday during the team duels, UK, or Madison Central finished six out of 16 teams, and in the individual event on, Saturday, or on Thursday, uh, they, the Central finished seven out of eight, seventh out of 18 teams. In the team event, Central picked up wins over Jeffersonville, Indiana, Caldwell County, and Wayne County, but suffered losses to Boyle County and Woodford County. Carson Herbst at 144 and Lucas Hutchinson at 157 were undefeated in their weight classes. In the individual portion of the tournament on Thursday, Robert Nardali finished second at 132. Herbst and Hutchinson were fourth in their weight classes, and Diego Peltier was fifth at the 215-pound weight class. 
Central back in action this uh, Saturday at home for senior night. And while we're doing this, and we don't have any guests this week, I figured we'd throw this in here. We usually throw our IHOP video in, uh, usually at the end of the show. But we kind of wanted to highlight it a little bit this week. Uh, the Stephanie Mezzandorino at IHOP has sponsored uh, uh, video, uh, kind of awards for football and volleyball, and now for wrestling as well. And they do a stack, a stack of the week, and this week it went to Chance Mills. So here's uh, Stephanie Mezzandorino and Coach Chad Fife giving the IHOP Stack of the Week to Chance Mills. Stack of the Week. Stephanie Mizzernino here with IHOP and partner Destination Athlete presenting Chance Mills with his Stack of the Week. Get your t-shirt, 52 weeks of free pancakes, and your IHOP gift card. Congratulations, Chance. Chance went 5-0 last weekend, and he won his match against Southern. First eighth grader to win this award, so Chance is off to a really good season, and his future is bright. Congratulations. Thank you. Stack of the Week. Well, we appreciate everything Stephanie Mezzandorino does for the folks uh, here and uh, all the uh, athletes here in uh, Madison County and uh, her organization there at IHOP. Very, very good to, uh, I mean, not only do they, uh, you know, give out those awards, they, they feed the kids a lot of times and do a lot of good things. So, uh, appreciate what they do. So, if you get a chance, go over and get yourself a meal at IHOP. You can't go wrong with an IHOP meal. Right, Randy? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Other wrestling news, Madison Southern's wrestling team on Thursday competed at the GRC Invitational. There was a boys and girls portion of this tournament. In the boys portion, uh, Madison Southern finished 14th. Uh, Stephen Whitehead moved to 29-0 on the season by taking first place in the 285-pound division. Uh, he won all four of his matches by fall at this event, and uh, Southern's Chris Begley was second at the 150-pound weight class as well. In the girls' event, Madison Southern finished fifth, but they only brought three wrestlers with them, so those three wrestlers did pretty good. They had two, two winners and a second place. Uh, Kendall Congleton was first at 114. Uh, Sierra Young was first at 152. And Haley Young was the runner-up at 235. So uh, the Madison Southern girls wrestling program has uh, been very successful and uh, continues to rack up some wins despite having low numbers. You know, but There you go. So that's all we got for you this week. Like I said, no guest, but we did have some interviews for you there. And uh, we'll be back, we'll back with a guest next week, and uh, we'll have some fun stuff. And we always come up with something uh, unprofessional and fun to do around here. So, <laughs> but appreciate everybody watching. As always, we do a nightly show Monday through Friday, uh, sometime between like nine and eleven <laughs> at some point. <laughs> whenever we get done with the stuff, whenever I get back to the office, uh, Randy hits me up, and we have a live show every night where we tell you what happened each night in Madison County sports, and that's available across all the platforms: Facebook, Twitter. Uh, our richmondregister.com, all that good stuff. But as always, the best place to keep up with Madison County Sports is Twitter, Richmond R Sports, and then on Facebook at Register Sports. So as always, appreciate you watching. Hope you have a blessed new year. Hope you aren't too hungover for you adults out there. And uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next week. Happy New Year! <laughs> Richmond Register Sports Show is brought to you by Metronet. Super fast internet, simply a better connection. Total comfort, heating and air conditioning. Let Total Comfort keep you cool or warm this winter. Call for service or for a free replacement quote. Wins Auto Detailing Service. And by KYMedia.net. Digital media solutions on your terms. Thanks for watching the Richmond Register Sports Show. For more information about all things sports in Madison County, Log on to richmondregister.com or on Twitter. And like us, Register Sports, on Facebook. Get the Richmond Register directly to your mailbox or get the app online and visit richmondregister.com.